Welcome to Voice of Reason. Uh, today we have a special guest, you know, uh, once a uh, sport is always a soldier. We are privileged to have a retired officer um, in the military. I have with me this day, retired Colonel Dr. Yobinari. He's a security expert, just as I said earlier. Uh, we're going to be looking at security on the program today at the regional level and at the national level. It's good to have you on the program, sir. A very good evening to you, sir. Thank you very much, Admiral. Thank you. So, uh, let's go straight into it. Um, what would you regard as the primary causes of the nation's security problems? And where were we as a nation when things degenerated this much? Uh, well, that's a very thorny uh, question. Uh, but notwithstanding, I'll attempt to, uh, to answer it uh, in the best way I can. Um, our, our problem, you know, it's, it's a common knowledge that right now we are faced with uh, a hydra-headed uh, uh, security uh, situation. There's insecurity across the spectrum of our society, uh, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. We are faced with one security uh, issue or the other. It's either banditry um, in the in the north, terrorist activities, insurgencies, kidnapping, you know, in the in the in the in the north, central, northeast, in the south, east, southwest. So it's, it has become a daily uh, occurrence. Now, uh, to address this issue, we find out that as we speak, the military is involved. As a matter of fact, all the security uh, forces that we have, all the security agencies are involved. But addressing it squarely, I would say that uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, uh, error in in the in the approach to handling this crisis that we have at hand. First, the strategy well maybe a miscalculation from the you know or, or, or the, the, the a political from the political uh, uh, angle you know and then that of uh, uh, the military too. But again, you know, since we are in a democratic uh, dispensation, so whatever the military foists, I mean, sorry, whatever the political overlords bring forth, you know, more or less everybody could talk with that. So, the, milit the, the political uh, power, the political strategy, the political might in this respect, you know, also uh, gave the military a, a wrong uh, uh, kind of uh, assumption, you know. So, there's, there's, uh, there's, 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 a, there's an issue there. So, but um, I believe that there are ways out of it, and I'm sure they are finding a way out of it. Okay, so um, many people in the country today talk about the political will. Yes. Now, the issue of security agencies doing more than they are presently doing should the political will uh, be shown by the political leaders. Well, absolutely, because it is the political will that will drive the military might. If you have the military might and you don't have the political will, you still be like a lame duck. So once we have the political will, we get the right, you know, um, uh, I don't want to use the word right leadership, but once we have the political will, I'm sure that uh, 
the battle will be held for. So are we fighting insecurity which has become a monster in our national life the right way? Um, I wouldn't say we are fighting it in the right way. You know, um, I think um, we must e e evolve, the military has to evolve um, its strategy, new strategy, uh, rather than um, uh, wait until things happen. I think I will advocate or encourage a situation whereby we carry the battle to the enemy's uh, uh, doorstep. All right? And especially for the Southwest, we look at a way of combing the forests in the Southwest, wherever these hoodlums or kidnappers or bandits or insurgents are, 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 are suspected to be operating from. And how do we also achieve that? There's need for a synergy between the uh, security forces or security agencies. There must be timely, um, timely dissemination of information. And there's also the need to um, encourage the citizenry to be aware. There must be some kind of uh, everyone being their brother's keeper. You know, when you see something, you say something. Like we say, security is everybody's business. It's not just the business of the security uh, agencies or security forces or the police or the military alone. Because once it happens, everyone is involved, everyone is affected. Okay, so um, in a practical way, when you talk about the fact that the forest should be combed, especially in the southwest, for instance, um, how practically can we come, uh, given the fact that we have a very large or vast landmass, uh, combing the forest will entail what? Well, combing the, the forest will entail, uh, in, in the past, you know, we used to have what you call the forest guards. Mm. So what stops us from, you know, bringing up the idea of the forest guards? And aside that, thank God, with technology, we can deploy drones, all right? So um, there are so many, many ways. And apart from all that too, we, you can also, you know, um, encourage, you know, the local vigilantes, such right. that information can be well, you know, disseminated. So um, what preventive measures would you recommend um, Security experts like you would say it's rather better when you are preventive security wise rather than being reactive. So uh, we are in it already. What preventive measures so that it will not escalate because it seems to be escalating on a daily basis? What preventive measures do you think, as a people and even as a government, uh, do you think we need to adopt? Well, part of this we have already discussed now, even in the course of this. Uh after a brief discussion, part of it we've touched on. Um, it, it's, it's something that has to be a continuous uh, process. And like I said, um, there must be, uh, say for instance, uh, in each community, you know, we must develop um, a, a uh, say, at, at even the world levels, starting from the world levels, you know, you have to develop you know, the, the uh, vigilante uh, group, you appoint, you know, the local chief, you appoint village heads, you appoint um, uh, town uh, heads, you have appoint uh, ward, uh, you know, these wards that like, you know, so that you have a back-to-back -back, um, approach and then, uh, you know, encouraging awareness, security, consciousness, you know, of, of the people being aware, you know, such that if, if there's a strange happening within the community, such will be immediately reported. It will be reported to either the ward head or the street head, the community head, you know. And then from there, such things, you know, we get to the 
uh, law enforcement uh, agents such that uh, things are nipped in the board before they escalate. Okay. okay. Yeah. And and of course, again, um, there's need to uh, we, we haven't discussed that, but I've always advocated the situation whereby we we have uh, uh, community policing. You know, you know, such that they, you know you have policemen within the community. If anything happens, if there are strange things happening, there are some strangers or some strange movements within the community, they report them. They report them. And I will not stop at that. Okay? I will also encourage a situation whereby the government try as much as possible to provide at least the basic infrastructures, you know, the welfare of the citizenry, especially at the community level. Because you find out that some reports reaching us, you find out that uh, some, some of these bandits, you know, go to some communities. I, I don't think that's happening in the southwest, but especially in the northeast, where they go and they maybe make provision for, uh, for the people, what they are not even enjoying, you know, from the government. Maybe they, they give them some inducement, you know, and as such, they win them over to themselves, you know. So the government should make a conscious effort. The government, whether at the uh, local, state, and federal level, must make a conscious effort so that they can reach out and let the people have some kind of lease of life. All right? And that will ensure their loyalty. It happens even within your household. If you are not taking care, adequate or enough care, showing concern for, you know, for your, um, for your words enough, you cannot ensure, you, ca you cannot uh, vouch for their loyalty. But when you try as much as possible to reach out to them, to take care of their needs, their basic needs especially, I mean, they will also in turn, you know, be loyal to you. In this fight against insecurity, um, can you pinpoint, have you seen some lacuna in the approach that we've adopted? Or what exactly are we doing wrong? It as a people, as a government, in this fight against insecurity. Well, I know, uh, you see, we, we can just mm -hmm. continue to go around and about. I've just mentioned some of those things to you right now. But the good thing is that you're fleshing them up. In time, we go around it. <laughs> okay. Now, um, uh, for example, uh, you know, we have a war against the terrorists that's ongoing in the Northeast. And in the South, South, you have the uh, militants, the IPOB, and all sorts of other you know, ethnic militias in the southwest you have pockets sporadic you know incidents of banditry to kidnapping you know all across now what I'm saying here is that we need to spread our tentacles such that we get timely information about this, about the activities of these insurgents. And when we get such information, the battle should be taken to them. We should be, we should be, we should be proactive rather than reactive. We should not just sit down. I mean, when I say we, I'm talking about even the military and all the other security agencies. agencies. The government should take the battle to their doorstep. Chase them. Chase them to their holes and smoke them out. And that's possible. Sorry? It's possible. It's possible. I believe it's possible. I believe it's possible. When you get information about where they are located, don't, 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 we shouldn't beat around the bush. 
An enemy is an enemy in whatever coloration. Because once he or she has the opportunity at hitting their target, they hit it very badly. Okay, so um, amidst all this, we're preparing for elections. Yeah. Do you think um, it is safe or conducive? Or uh, do you see any threat to the 2023 election when you look at happiness, you know, security wise across the country? I know that's an obvious <laughs> question you're asking me. I mean, once there's insecurity, then you cannot talk about safety. That, that is the situation being safe. Of course, what is happening, the insecurity situation in the country is a threat to a democratic existence or governance. And talking about the election, of course, you know, I think, you know, we should be a lot concerned about the insecurity in the land. Because the insecurity that we're experiencing, it is a threat to any peaceful election taking place. Because some of these bandits, some of these insurgents might even be recruited. And come to think of it, if you even trace back the, ex the, the um, the advent of the insurgency. It has to do with politicking. It has to do with politicking. I don't want to be in the rumor mill or join with the rumor mill, but I mean, we've had um, reports of uh, how people were shipped in to add to numbers to vote. We've also had cases where some people were recruited and armed just for political gains. And by the time they are done, they are discarded. But it's not easy. An able-bodied man, he has no job. He used to have a job, whether the job was legal or illegal, he used to have a job. He could keep his family. Now he's been thrown out of uh, livelihood and he has a gun. Tell me, what does he do? Tell me, your guess is as good as mine. So what new strategies would you consider to be adopted to mitigate against electoral cares? Well, electoral cares. First, for me, I think uh, we need to be honest with ourselves. Because what we are seeing right now is money politics. With the highest bidders taking the day. If you ask me, I would rather a situation whereby we always stop what is called delegates and we do what we call direct primaries. Really? Oh yes. So that you look at the electorates, eyeball to eyeball, and let the electorates go out there. It's not just a question where a few individuals will say they are acting on behalf of the whole, and then they will be naming their prize, and then they will go with the highest bidder. I mean, that's my personal opinion. 
I think I'm entitled to it. Okay, so um, you recommend direct primary? Absolutely. Maybe next time. Absolutely. I think I think we need to. Well, are things messed up in the just completed primaries? Well, I more or less kept my distance because I got disgusted by the uh, the, the 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 show of. Uh, uh, the shenanigans of uh, the, the 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 dollar, the money thing, you know. I don't think uh, that's the way to go. Yes, I know. Please mark my words. There's no way you can divorce money or politics from money. Though you need to spend money, but when you want to spend money, it has to be, you know, money reasonably spent, All right? Um, or responsibly spent. Well, what are the specific or peculiar security challenges in your urban land? Have you identified any? I mean, it's a national issue, a national phenomenon, but have you identified any security challenge that is peculiar to the urban land? I don't think there is a, a, a security challenge that is uh, peculiar to uh, the Southwest, uh, because I look at the nation as an entity, and I think, um, uh, except that the Southwest is Yoruba, North is Aousa, predominantly, uh, East is Igbo, or Southeast is Igbo, you know, except for that. Uh, but all the 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 uh, security uh, incidents, uh, the, the, it's it's like the same. It's like the same because we have incidents of uh, banditry, we have incidents of uh, kidnapping, armed robbery, killing. That's that's it. So how uh, can okay, the people of the southwest be? Better protected. Well, um, I recall that the um, the leaders of the Southwest came together and uh, you know initiated this uh, idea of uh, having their own security. Uh, or protective security uh, force, uh, which the Christian Amotep, and that cuts across the Southwest. So I think um, it's it's a step in the right direction. What I think should be done is, um, you know, the Amotep should be strengthened. Should be strengthened in the circumstance. You know, because if it has to do with security, no amount of security is too much. No amount of security. So there are levels of security. But at least uh, the idea of the Amotep, I think it's a good step in the right direction. So this needs to step up and strengthen this uh, uh, body, this organization, such that um, they will be, uh, you know, uh, protected and insulated from unnecessary vagaries and uh, um, um, uh, attacks to their person and uh, their family. Okay, um, and that, and of course, I'm sure the the various uh, states states houses of assembly uh, should, you know, um, for the uh, create uh, laws that will uh, protect them. Do you think your states needs a technical? Uh, because all other states um, adopted this particular model. But um, leaders of thought in the region are wondering why we don't have a multiple core in the United States. Well, that's a very good one. But again, you know, 
the position of Lagos State is a peculiar one. Lagos State is the commercial capital of Nigeria. Hitherto, it was the federal capital before the movement to Abuja. But right now, it is the commercial capital of the federation and as such is a melting pot. As we speak, yes, it's in the Southwest. But again, the Southwest cannot claim sole ownership of Lagos. Mm. In terms, I mean, sorry, I don't, mark my words. When I say sole ownership, an inverted comma. That, that itself is a debated one, but we're not going there today. <laughs> so, do, do you agree that um, a centralized police force has presently obtained in Nigeria can truly address the nation's security challenges? We run a centralized police system. Uh, some persons have advocated that it should be decentralized uh, such that at least states will wield some influence. Uh, you get a state governor saying, oh, on paper, I'm the security, chief security officer of my state, but I can't give the police commission like my state orders. Some would dismiss that as, you know, cheap blackmail coming from the governors. But a centralized system of, you know, policing that we run, um, is it one you want the country to devolve or decentralize, or should we maintain it? That's a very good and interesting question. Yes, what we have right now is a centralized force. I think it's high time that we have a decentralized police force. Because part of the problem that we are experiencing right now is because of the centralized nature of our police force, of our police. The centralized police force is not equipped enough to face, to confront the insecurity challenges confronting this country. So I believe that the way to go is to decentralize. It's either we go regional, if we choose to go, if we choose to restructure into region, or we go by state. It is a fact, just like you just, you, 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 the scenario that you painted. Yes, most state governors, they call them chief security officers of their states. But chief security officer on paper, you've had it in the past how some state commissioner of police and and the uh, governors uh, shut off going fist fisticuff with each other, exchanging words and all sorts of stories, all sorts of manner of uh, things happening. And I've said it a couple of times that what is the problem? People will say that, oh, if you allow the governor to be in charge of the police, he will just pocket them and start to do whatever he likes. And I always say that, no. It's funny. It's an irony. When you say someone is a chief security officer of the state, he can't even summon the police commissioner. The police commissioner, if he wants to be, after getting orders from the central, from the top, to go the other way, and if the, if the, if the, if the uh, governor calls him and says, go this way, at best, if he wants to be diplomatic, he probably will tell the governor that, uh, you know, he, he has been asked to report to Abuja. I'm so, so, so sorry. I'll get back to whatever. Yeah. So I, I, I believe that it will go a long way in helping solve our security challenges if we have 
either the state police or regional police if the structure you know because of course you know we're talking about restructuring and then we've 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 come to think of it we've had regional police before back in the system we've had regional police before that's why we are looking at the possibility of restructuring when you restructure when you restructure it doesn't mean that you want to break the country into fragments no but it's to have a holistic look at the structure and you know where to realign and reorientate and <laughs> okay uh, lastly before i let you go the supreme court in the united states just affirmed the right of individuals to be arms just yesterday and we are not in this debate in nigeria as to whether Nigerians should be allowed to, you know, bear hands for self-defense. Uh, it's a tricky one, but it takes someone like you to help make a sense out of it. Um, on which divide would you pledge of these uh, citizens, I mean Nigerians, bearing arms for self-defense and, you know, still keeping the structure of you having to reach the police even at the expense of your life and all that, um, what would your recommendation be? Well, it's a very tricky one. As a retired military officer, <laughs> having kept arms or used arms for decades before leaving the service, you don't sometimes want to find yourself in a situation where you are bearing arms. Mm -hmm. That's one. But again, you are looking at protection of life, your life. You are looking at protection of the lives of your family members. You are looking at the protection of your property so that you are not dispossessed of your property unjustly. Then you now think that, oh, at least let me protect my household, let me protect my family, let me protect my family. Then you probably want to bear arms. But in reality, all these hoodlums that you see, all these insurgents, these bandits, these terrorists, the kind of arms they bear, they are automatic. Weapons. How do you match that? As an individual, even if you go get the license to bear arms, you have to put in a license that you want it for gaming. Whether the game is a life animal, a human being is a different ball game. But it's for gaming. But in this day and age, the insurgents they have automatic weapons. What do you mean by automatic? Automatic weapon is a weapon that maybe you load your magazine and your magazine carries about 20, 25, 30 rounds and then you just press your trigger and then you can release 5 to 10 shots within seconds as against your, 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 your rifle that you are aiming. Don't you understand? With an automatic weapon, you don't even need to aim. It just spreads. And aside that, some of these bandits, some of these insurgents, they even use explosives. Is it? And you know, you know, you know the, it's, it's not a conventional war that we have at hand. It's not a conventional war. It's insurgency. It's a terrorist type of uh, action where there, there are no defined boundaries. Even the targets, the enemy, you are not even sure. Somebody could just be sitting next to you. You don't even know he's an enemy. It's only by the time he or she just drops the bag down and then what we have pop. 
you start to wonder, ah, this person we were sitting together in the last one hour. So these are the kind of situation we have at hand. So our society, to my mind, is not ripe enough for such. It's not. To be able to bear arms, to be able to use arms, you even need some level of education, training. I've had some close friends say, oh, you know, yes, maybe at the end of the day, maybe, well, we don't pray that our situation should continue to de deteriorate. We pray that our situation should, you know, evolve and get better. So for me, I, it's, it's never it's a no, no. It's a no, no. It's been interesting talking to you, Father. Thank you so much for your time on the program. Um, it's it's just been fantastic talking to you. Uh, I hope we'll be back some other time to have this kind of a session with you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Anna. All right. This is where we're going to call it a wrap. Um, join us next time on the program. Courtesy Voice of Reason, B.O.R. I remain Anna. We'll see you next time.